Hey, Max Wardell here, Overhead Athletics with Bennett. We're looking at his throw and we're gonna use constraints to actually alter his throw. So this is a constraints learning approach or a constraints led approach that we're gonna actually introduce to get him to load his glute better. So if you watch from behind over here, and you'll see from that angle that he likes to bring that knee forward and load that knee forward. But if you watch him from directly behind, what you'll see is that he doesn't actually load his glute very well at all. He loads quite a bit into the quad as he goes forward and stays pretty upright with the trunk as he starts to go. And this is an athlete who we've been working with for a while and has had some shoulder issues in the past and is working through those things. And all things come into play whenever you're dealing with an issue at the shoulder because this is a systems problem. We got, him to, we got to get him to work better through the entire system. So in, in order to do that, we want to see him flex or hinge at the hip. And one easy way we can start is just have him start in a flex position. So spread your feet out a little bit. Okay, right there. And you see what he wanted to do. So I have him start in that position and try to maintain it as he goes as his warm up for the next constraints we're gonna introduce. So go ahead. And you can see he stays flexed a little bit longer which keeps him into his hip. But we notice that he still is biased into that quad dominance action. In order to get him out of that, what we need to do is we need to change the environment or place some constraints on him as a mover so that he has to move differently. One way we do that is hop off the mound here. So one way we can start to introduce another constraint to the system here is a slanted mound. Now, what we've done here, if you circle around, is we've actually tilted the mound and we've put some bases under one side of the mound. So now the mound is on a slant that's going to lead him to actually flex the knee more. So we've introduced a constraint which is, hey, if I continue to load in this same fashion, I'm no longer able to successfully complete the throw. And he has to go from there. And we'll just let him get some reps in. And then we're going to actually constrain him further by disallowing him or preventing him from getting into the same position that he was in before, forcing him to go into more of a hip hinge position through various constraints on him. Let's first let him adapt to this, feel what it feels like, and we start to add more components. So now that he's starting to feel it, we can analyze his movement and see, is he loading into an excessively quad dominant position with too much tibial advancement or is he doing a good job? And so it looks better already and then their next step here. Okay, so looking at a constraints led approach here, what we've done for all practical purposes, tilted the mound. He loads excessively into that quad, so we're trying to say, all right, let's facilitate that fault a little bit. Let's make it easy for you to do this, but then your body recognizes that that pattern doesn't really work so well anymore. It's no longer a successful or a usable strategy for me. So the mound tilting influences him to try to flex more through the knee, which he says, eh, that may be a little bit of a fault. So now he's starting to recognize that that strategy is not as optimal. And then, we're going to constrain them. So another use of the aqua bag here is essentially as a cone. So you're going to get up on the mound, like you're going to get set. If we can get it to stand, the goal is that he cannot kick this thing over. And I can even hold it. You cannot knock it over with your knee. So now he can no longer bring his knee forward. So we've put a roadblock essentially in his pathway. And this is constraints led approach in action. And then he's got to actually replicate the throw in the way we want him to replicate it without loading into that same fashion. And you see just by the way he sets up here that he wants to load into this, into this pattern where he goes here because he's, he's basically set up here with straight and then a bent knee. I can tilt this here so he can't go into it as he goes forward. And then he's got to flex more at his hip in order to successfully produce power. So now you're going to throw a little bit faster and a little bit faster. Good. 
A little bit more. So keep adding speed. And so one strategy you'll see to get around this is that he no longer wants to flex through the quad because he can't because this thing's blocking him. So what he's going to do is he's going to lose his hip hike and swing open a little bit. So we've already thought of that. And we've got a constraint that we're going to place on it. Now he has to actually step over the hurdle as he goes and you can't kick this one over. So that prevents him from coming out and around that hurdle. If you look at the setup here, he's got a little bit higher cone so he can't just cheat and swing out and around that. And then we throw our initial preclusion to that fault back up here. Now he has to replicate this throw in a more desirable fashion. Okay, so you're going to give me about 10 of those. And I give him a sufficient repetition so that he has to actually make a change in the way that he's moving. Make sure that your ball is hitting eye level in the net. And we can give him a target there. And what we often do is have our athletes throw it uh, a long distance or throw it a 60 foot six inches like they're pitching with these same constraints so that they have to replicate them in an environment that's closer to what's going to be required of them in the game so they can make changes to their throw in that pattern. Nice. Don't kick it over. So the bag prevents the knee from coming excessively forward. The hurdle makes him utilize his hip hike as he goes down the mound. And then we can remove certain constraints if we feel like they're not implicated or they're not making or assisting in making the change that we want to see. So the next thing I would probably remove is the bases under the mound. But that's constraints-led approach and action and some constraints-induced learning. Let's take those out. It'll give me a couple reps. Beautiful. So that's how we start to utilize a constraints-led approach to improve hip loading away from a quad loaded position, but this is the same idea and the same sort of system that we may use with any number of different biomechanical inefficiencies or movement flaws. Nice. Very good. If you guys liked the video, hit the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Overhead Athletics signing off.